Hey guys, so I've been using Linode for over eight years now for all of the websites that I've hosted. This is after I've used all the big cloud providers that charge a fortune, as well as the shared hosts that never seem to work. Linode is great for things like setting up your own virtual private network. Basically, if it runs on Linux, it's gonna run on Linode. So they give you the ultimate flexibility and freedom to set up your own Linux server uh, to do all kinds of crazy stuff, whatever you, you dream of. So make sure you guys look at the link in the description tab below. You'll get a free $20 credit if you sign up through that link. There's payment plans as low as $5 a month to get started today. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I am talking about the best Node.js frameworks of 2019, or at least what I think are the best right now. And for this list, it's not about like what was the most popular on this or that. I'm going based on my own experience. I feel like I've messed with like all of these frameworks. Because one thing I, I do want to focus on, or at least mention, is that the Node.js ecosystem is like so one-track minded toward, towards web de development, because that's really all it was built for, that it's, it's much easier to master the ecosystem. It, it's not like Python and Django versus like Python and Flask. Python bottle or um, you know bottle framework versus like flask I mean they are like all night night and day different um, and you look at node.js frameworks they're all very much similar like they're all similar and, and it's surprising how often like you'll look at some of these slim down micro version like API node.js frameworks that they say are like super fast but really it's all just the node ecosystem and there's not that much to it um, but Anyway, all these slim down things, and then it's like, well, shit, I need templates. I need a template engine or something like that. Um, you start bringing in all these different, you know, dependencies or whatever. And then, like, sure enough, you'll find that some of these, like, additional side projects to some of these smaller projects are, like, bringing in things like Express and all this other stuff. So, basically, it's all ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous because it's all Node.js. And like, if you want to be a master at any one of these frameworks, all you got to do is learn Node.js and get used to it because they're all so similar. Whereas I wouldn't say the same thing in Python uh, or C Sharp or Java or so many other languages out there that exist beyond just the web. Um, you can say that about Node almost, I think. And then uh, even though people use Node for like file systems, command line interfaces and such that aren't necessarily now, you know, web-based, but it's still, it's like those are not really, you know, you're not, you're never going to write a game with it where you could with Python or something. It, it, the point is, is like Node.js is definitely one track minded. It's very much like PHP where like uh, it's just focusing on the web. PHP was trying to be what Perl was for the web and do the web better and they kind of did but that's like where they get their sigils and stuff for their very humble names all that stuff comes from pearl um that's a very one track focused community as well i feel like so um if you want to be a ninja at any one of these things you just simply learn the api for node.js it's all there there's these different versions and it's all there and then if you want to actually contribute to the project it's you write c and c plus plus Maybe all C++, I'm not sure. In fact, you know what? I'm actually changing this video mid-video. I'm not going to do like some sort of countdown top five bullshit. Like there, there's not even that many frameworks you should use. Let me start with the ones that are just really hyped up. Uh, Ad Adonis or Adonis.js. Uh, this is one that I, I have used. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. I, I've raised the issue of like it's one dude that's like working on basically the entire thing. And I guess that's okay to a lot of people because that's the way a lot of projects were started. But the point is like people would put this at the top of their list and it's like, well, why? Like for what? Like why? What has been created in this that like you couldn't do in something else? Like it hasn't even been around that long. It's got one person developing it. It's not nearly as good as ExpressJS. So a lot of people will mention Gatsby.js because this is a Node.js framework that has working support for GraphQL, which is really facebook's rest killer like i think they call it the rest killer or something like that but like it, it's it's i don't know man like i mean i guess like everybody's jumping on graphql but a lot, a lot of uh, you know graphql was created by facebook to solve a problem that like a lot of big data companies have it's not a problem that most small development shops have but once like an industry starts moving in one direction everybody's like a, a just a, a herd animal and we all just kind of jump over to it um, and GraphQL is kind of that one thing uh, there. So a lot of like a lot of the things that GraphQL solves are things that people should learn on their own, 
to become a truly effective developer. Now you're just relying on this one Facebook tool to do this new thing that's never going to be fully uh, adopted by Google or anything like that. So like you're always going to have to relearn shit like and, and if like GraphQL is solving the problem, okay, like, yeah, my endpoints, I want to be very specific about an API endpoint to say I want this and that and get this and that back. Okay, well, you can do that with REST API. Uh, we've been doing that. Like, so Fastify gives you better support to be able to build your own product to solve those problems on your own. And then if one day you decide, hey, I'd rather just have all that magic um, hidden behind the scenes with GraphQL because they're essentially doing the same thing, um, but in a much different way and also in ways that come at a cost, like at, at caching. Some of the, the actual um, the proposals being put in place right now, because people are like, well, caching, you have to think about caching differently in GraphQL. Well, why should I? Like, it's bullshit. That's one of those things where it's like an opinionated way of doing things. And now we all have to think about a new way of solving a problem that we already solved a long time ago. Anyway, I'm not saying that GraphQL is not a good product. It's got some of the best developers behind it. I've been a Facebook de uh, like React developer now for like five years. I know Facebook writes some good stuff. I know GraphQL is good, but it is one of those opinionated ways of doing something where I just don't think that we're going to have um, everybody get behind it just because it was, it was pro it, just because it was created by Facebook. Like Google's always going to be trying to come out with their competitor and Microsoft's going to try to do the same thing. And eventually somebody's going to break through and we're going to have to be like, Oh, we got to relearn all this stuff again. GraphQL sucks. You know what I mean? Like th th that's, and that's what happens. Like that's what happened with jQuery. Um, and that's, what's going to happen with GraphQL eventually. And it's, it's funny, but it keeps us all employed. And in a way, it keeps us all junior developers, like because we're always having to relearn. But I'll be I'll be honest with you, dude, being a programmer for me, I actually love it. Like I love learning stuff. So I love learning things over um, for the most part, like like at least new frameworks. I get excited um, and usually I'm let down pretty quickly because uh, I'm like, ah, oh, damn, it's going to be a ton of work to. This thing's not be some, it's not some, it's, it, it always looks shiny on the outside, right? It's like when we used to pick up and shop it for games and stuff, when we actually still bought them in stores. Um, and you, you know, it looks so shiny on the outside, especially like before we could demo games, like back in the old school days in the nineties, when you like bought a computer game off the shelf, half the time that damn thing wouldn't even install, wouldn't work. Um, but if it did like other times, like it, it was just a terrible game. Um, and you're just like, ah, oh, that shiny object sucks. Uh, but in computer programming, probably not really the same thing for some of these frameworks, but uh, for your dreams, though, like the it always takes a lot of work to get anything off the ground worth uh, worth doing. And there really isn't one single tool that's going to help you do that. So basically, I'm not even saying that Express is the best framework out there, but it's probably the second best. Now, honestly, most people would say that Express is the best. I'm just going to, I'm going to jump right to this. I'm going to say that Fastify is the best. Seriously, this platform is the best. It just works. It works better than any other Node.js framework I've ever seen, like coming out of the box. If you need a template engine or whatever, yeah, no problem. They got plugins and stuff for it. If you just want like a fast API, uh, if you want to use like uh, and create basically your own GraphQL, this is the best tool to use. It doesn't bake all this type of magic and stuff. It's um yeah it's it's definitely the best one I've ever seen. Plus it's got pretty good community support. So not enough people are talking about Fastify really. This one is like one of the ones where it just worked right out of the gate. 